Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, local realtor here in Ottawa, and I'm joined today by probably one of the funniest folks I've ever met in the Come city, okay. Todd Van Allen, who is actually performing nowadays at Absolute Comedy. It's also funny, sort of like all the different communities, that one of the first corporate shows I did when I moved here, uh, this guy messaged me and said, do you want to do a corporate at a golf course? I'm like, yep, no stranger to it. I know what's going to happen. My envisioning of it is... I'll be at the end of an 18 day of golf, 18 hole, 18 holes of golf. Everyone will be sunburnt and drunk. They will have eaten a huge plate of beef and I'm standing in between them and the silent auction where they can win a golf bag. Like that's, that's how it's going to go. I'll do 20 minutes. No one will want me there and it's fine. And then the details start coming into about the show. It's like, um, okay. So it's, um, Indian business. It's like, okay. So a bunch of people from India, I get it. Okay. So they just want something. Then it's like, okay, and their families are going to be there. I'm like, oh, great. You got to clean so it up now I've got Now <laughs> I've got kids and wives. Great. So Indian businessmen with their families at a golf course. The place is, just, is, is filled with Indian people. There's like two white people mm. uh, off in the corner. So I'm like, I don't know how they got the invite. I don't know what they got, but okay, they're there. And I, I find the organizer and I go, so I assume I'm going on before dinner. It's like, yes, you'll be going on before dinner. It's like, perfect. And it's like, uh, now, when, when do you want me up? He says, well, well, we'll bring you on. And so in, they, they start the thing, and the first thing that I, I hear is the MC going out into the middle of this dance floor. So, like, the way it is is, like, uh, all the tables are around the dance floor, and the dance floor is empty. Mm. It's a great way to connect with a crowd, to be so far away from them. So already I'm starting to think, mm, I don't know how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. And what... But then I was like, well, now I'm really in trouble, is the MC starts speaking, and I turn to the DJ, uh, who is, like, playing music beforehand, and I was like, what is that? And he goes, oh, that's Punjabi. I went, perfect. You know I don't speak Punjabi. He said, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I'm like, hmm, okay. And so he, uh, I, I'm waiting for him just to say my name, right, because then I know that I'm going to go. And he's like, ladies, and he says, Whatever it is in Punjab, because I don't speak Punjab. And uh, he announces a dance troupe. So this Bollywood dance troupe comes out and takes the stage. Mm. So I turn to the DJ again. I go, so they're going first, huh? And he's like, yeah. And then, uh, so, so then it's me. He goes, no, there's another dance troupe. Mm. And then it's you. So I'm going, I have two Bollywood-style dance troupes engaging the audience. They're loving it. And I'm like, what can I possibly have in common with these people? Yeah. Well, they couldn't put you in the middle. Yeah. Well, I think I, honestly, I think that would have been worse because then it's because then <laughs> it's, it's like, a like Todd it's like a Todd sandwich, and I'm like, get get to the, get to the bread then, because this is not. And so, literally, the the way I connected with this because again, it was a, like the second dance crew goes, and I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm like this, and like, did, did, me, that, did that sound like my name? Did I no? Nope. Nope. And then, uh, uh, literally, I just suddenly heard Todd. And then this guy hands me the cordless mic, and he leaves. And so I walk in, and everyone's like, "Who, is, like, like, who like, invited this who, guy?" Right. And I went. Uh, so it's thank. And, and, and my my opening line for these people is, um, I, "I they they want a comedian. I can't thank you enough for having me as as part of your evening." Um, you realize I'm not Russell Peters, right? Like you know, did, did you knew? Yes. Did it? Did this? And uh, and that's that's how I got the crowd. It's like I acknowledged it. And, and then I just ca I called out the white people. It's like, where, where are my white people here? And they're like, <laughs> two people over there. It's like, keep your head down and eat the curry. That's all you're doing. Keep your head down. Eat, just smile politely. That's all you need to do tonight. And by that point, the crowd was like, okay, we get it. And He knows where he it is. Was, it was great. It was That's great. It. It, was, it was one of the best corporate shows I've ever done in my life. Weirdest one I've ever done. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was great. It was, it was that connection with the audience. I'm walking around, and I'm talking with people, and they, they were great. They... Thankfully, they spoke English, the majority of. I think there were some people that were just smiling nicely and, uh, you know, wait, waiting for the white man to go away so that they could enjoy their, you know, their, their food. The rest of the evening. The rest yeah. of the evening and, you know, yeah. So what, what does comedy look like in Ottawa today? Ha! It is great. It is, it's one of the funnest communities I have been privileged to be part of. Funnest slash funniest. Funnest slash funniest, yeah. It's the... Well, it's always going to be funny. Your, your communities are always going to be funny to, to some degree. Yeah. Like whatever whatever culture is is building out the the comedy, 
it's going to have a style to that area. Like it's going to build stuff out for various reasons. Like in Toronto, because Toronto itself is very neighborhood driven, because the East End is different from the West End, which is different from Little Italy, which is different from the, you know, the Annex, which is different from Etobicoke. Because Toronto itself is neighborhoody and fragmented, the community itself is fragmented. So you get these clique of comics over here. There's, there's overlap. There's overlap and, 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 and there's, there's movement in between the communities. But there is very much a, oh, there's this pack of comics and they seem to stick together. And then there's this pack of comics that seem to stick together. And there doesn't seem to be that in Ottawa. That was the first thing I kind of noticed as I, as things were coming in. And I came in at the perfect time to come into a comedy scene when nothing's open mm -hmm. because we're in lockdown. Yeah. Two months in, like May 2020, I came in and I got messages back from friends of mine going, how's the Ottawa community? And I go, I don't know. I haven't been able to see it. Like, it, there was no, I had one friend here that did stand up. That was it. And so he and I would kind of hang out. And so, like, we, we'd talk over Zoom and stuff and, like, you know, two meters apart, beers in the driveway and that sort of thing. And and just talks, like, so what are the rooms? What are the places? And that, and that sort of thing. And one, uh, so as, as things started to open, and this was at a time when there was, like, um, plexiglass surrounding the stage. Like, it was just, when you think back at it, it was, did you ever go out to shows yeah. Oh, yeah. during that? So, you know, it's like there was... Normally there'd be 180, 200 tables. Now it's down to 10. 25. 25, yeah. yeah. So there's 50 people. Yeah, I remember in the room. first show, like when they first opened, I got yeah. a call and I was like, because they were trying to fill the room, like with all honesty, mm -hmm. they had a struggle filling out the room. So I got a call. I was like, yeah, I've been to your show. I'd love to come. It's a mm -hmm. free show, whatever. And then you, you obviously pay for your food and drinks, yeah. or whatever. And I got there. I was like, man, the room is empty. Yeah. Like I could sit at any table I want as long as it's not. Within the social distance, kind of two meters like, apart. Yeah, plexiglass on the stage, and we were still panicking that because we didn't have a vaccine at that point yeah. yet. So, and it was my wife actually. She went. She knew that things were opening up, and she turned to me one day and said, um, "So when are you going?" I go, "What do you mean?" He's like, "When are you going to shows? When are you going?" I said, "Well, let's talk about that." So we, you know, discussed it, and it's like, it's like if they think it's going to be safe, and they're doing it, and they did so much good work in terms of what we thought was the protocols at the time and, and following them. Mm -hmm. Every comic had their own mic. Everything was wiped down. You wore a mask until you were behind the plexiglass and then you took the mask off and then you're able to do that. The social distancing. There were rags all over the place so you can clean your hands. Like it was, the, the, the folks at Absolute Comedy, they did it so great. And that was where I was performing chiefly uh, for, for the majority of the time. So when you had that sort of confidence in the venue, your confidence in, in being able to perform increases as well so that was one of the things that kind of that that was interesting to me is like trying to get bearings you know in the in the time of cholera trying to figure out what a community yeah, is like yeah. right so eventually things started to open up more i started to get more exposure to the to the comedy communities i go out to open mics as i do more shows in, in, in yuck yucks and, and absolute and 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 starting to see how the the community is kind of built together and see how they are putting shows on and and that sort of thing and it is very much a family. It's very much a everyone knows each other. So much so that every year they have a um, uh, they have a awards show, which is basically a roast. And so everyone comes up and they roast each other. And it's like the only reason that you roast people is you roast people that you love, mm -hmm. right? And there's the best roasts are the ones that you know, you know, it's a stab, but then you get a wink. You know, it's like ah, eh, ah, eh, like that. It's like the the cute assassin. It's like ah, eh, like that. And so it kind of dovetailed nicely into, the, into my Write em Up show. I've been doing that for, you know, six years in, in Toronto. During the lockdown, we did it over Zoom and uh, Facebook Live and, and YouTube and Twitch, and we tried all the, all the different channels. And just have it, when, I, when I first saw, when I first got invited to this, this night, and it's a big event, everyone dresses up for it, and, like, you just go up and you start, you know, just pinging roses at everyone and making fun of them. And I went, well, it can work here because they already have this almost too much. Like I've had to tell my writers when they're writing the roast jokes about the comics they're performing is like, you got to keep it to what's in the room. I know everyone's got a history here and you guys know and they will know all the stuff you're talking about. Yeah. But you have to keep it to only stuff they do in the room. You, that's the only thing you can do. So just so yeah. for the audience that are watching, as far as 
the show goes. Mm-hmm. Can you give us a bit of an understanding yes. of what the show is all about? So, uh, so what happens is, and uh, you you have to know that I knew I did not know I should be wearing pants today. Like I thought this was audio only, so I apologize that you're seeing the knees. Oh, you didn't get the uh, memo. Oh, go, good, <laughs> perfect. Yes. Oh no, I got pants. It's, it's forty degrees out, know, man. I it's know. okay. It's just, but you you're dressed up. You got the the Ottawa Capital socks. I got. Oh yeah, those yeah, are. That's no, they're beautiful. I love those. Shout out to my guy. I Tom. I adore fun socks and people who don't i just haven't yeah. got no time for it's like you know oh stupid socks you're dumb and then i go on it's a show the concept of the show came from a friend of mine in la he's a comic there and i had another friend of mine say uh i have this idea for a show i want to bounce it off of you do you know this comic jimmy pardo and it's like yes and he goes he has a show idea that i really like to to see if it you know could work up here mm-hmm. Do you, how do you think we get a hold of him? And I said, do you want me to text him now? He's like, what? Goes, I know him. So, like, we can we can work that. So, texted him and he said, okay, let's, yeah, go ahead. You don't need to worry about it. You have my blessing. So, as soon as I got the blessing to do this show, do this concept, my buddy left town, moved to Barry, and quit comedy. So, I'm like, okay, great. So, now this idea is just sitting out there. Here's your baby. Yeah. It's like. You abandoned it. What are you doing? We have a baby together. I'm exactly, sorry, I gotta exactly. <laughs> so, so next time Jimmy came to Toronto, we were at a baseball game. He said, "I, I got to ask you. Remember, the, remember the, the 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 writing show that you do?" He says, "Yeah." He goes, "So my buddy who wanted to do it left. Can I do it?" He goes, "Go do it." So I went. Cool. So the the concept of the show is, I host a, a comedy night, you know, just like every other comedy show. I have six of Ottawa's best comics coming to the stage to perform. That should be enough for any audience, mm-hmm. but it is. So what I do is while the comedians are performing, I have a team of writers, I have three writers, that are writing roast jokes about everything that comedian does, says, whatever, what they're on wearing stage. on stage. Strictly on stage. Yeah. I've had to tell them. Uh, <laughs> leave the personal life leave, alone. Leave the personal life alone. Yeah. It's like, I don't care who stole whoever's boyfriend. I don't care. <laughs> Neither does the audience. They don't know. Keep it to what they do on nice. stage. So then the comedian goes away, and I grab the stack of roast jokes, and I read them to the audience verbatim. Okay, so whatever's on the card, I have to read to the audience. And they're in chronological order, so they can go through the set. And it's like, oh, I remember that joke, I remember that joke. Oh, he does look like Sasquatch, like the, like the whole bit. And so the, we, we've had a few tropes over the course of you know, now eight years of the show, uh, one being that um, uh, the best... Uh, roasts that uh, that the audience like, and I, I let the audience know it's like you know if you really like one, we're gonna put it on the fridge, and that's a shout out to like when you're five years old and you come home with like a uh, a turkey hand mm-hmm. you know piece of art for Thanksgiving. Go, mommy, I made a turkey. He's like, oh, that's great, and you put it up on the fridge, and then a week later it's in the garbage. So that so we will put the best ones on the fridge, and I'll you know mime that we're putting him like on on the wall behind us and the crowd will get into it and they're like oh i really like that one and they will rally to make this joke go out so then what we do is we post them we post these roasts on our social media at write em up show so on instagram facebook all that and uh, the best ones are published out there without context Mm -hmm. so literally you, you could get a good one with nice hat and it's like, so someone's on Instagram, nice hat. I don't get it. But it makes them yeah. want to come to the show. Is it uh, most like, is it posted as a, a post or is it more like a video? I, t- I take a picture of the oh, okay. actual roast card and, and then, then just I, just, I post them up. So that's one of the memes. The, uh, the other one is uh, if the roast does not work and the crowd does not like it and it's just not with silence, we put them in a shredder. And we, we used to be uh, just like, we didn't have a shredder on stage. I'll just throw it out and go. But now I've actually got a shredder, so we're gonna like drop it like so you drinks like that. And myself, two things have happened. Uh, I will screw up a read. You know, I'm a professional voice actor. Uh, I will screw up things. And I call myself Toddy Ten Takes because Toddy Ten Takes. Toddy Ten <laughs> Takes because it will take ten times for me to get through a script. So when I screw it up, I will go up, oh, flag on the play. And the other one is I will pre-read a roast and I'll giggle. Or like, like in some cases, I have laughed to the point of tears. And so now the audience is going, ah, and I go, now I'm about to la-la land this, which is 
um, you know, everyone who first saw La La Land went, oh, it's amazing, it's amazing. And someone goes and sees it and goes, okay, white people save jazz. I don't know. No. Mm. Right. So I've just I've overhyped it, and now I hope you like it, but it will probably not. So it's just one of those foibles of, like, I will screw up a, a read or I will just get so happy about it. It's like, I can't wait for you to hear it. No, huh? Okay. All right. So Amazing. So how often do you guys host that show? Normally? So uh, the first one happened, I think, in February? February, I think it was. And so uh, we've got the next one coming up June 27th. That's a Thursday. And I'm hoping to do it. I, I want to make them a little more of an event. Like it was it was easier in Toronto because there's so many people and the, the, the venue was such that we could do it monthly. And it was it was a great monthly show mm -hmm. to be able to do it because then I knew it was just like a rolling uh, thing. And there was, again, there was like no end of comics that were wanting to do it and, and, and willing to do it. Oh, so, it's a couple of things for the comic. I mean, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong on this one. It's one they're getting exposure. They're out there on stage. Two, they're also getting laughed at, which is a, a, yes. a fun way to do there's, business. Anyways, you there know, there have only been in the history of the show, and this was only in, in Toronto. There's only been two instances in at that point six years of doing the show that the comic was like, I don't care for this. Like one left while his roasts were being read out. Oh no! And uh, and the other one came up afterwards and was like, Why'd you make fun of my shirt? Go, you wore it. Like you know, like you know, come on, man. Okay. <laughs> Um, but one of my favorite moments, and it, it happens about once every two or three shows, is that you'll read a, a roast joke, the audience will laugh, and the audience laughter dies down. You just hear the comic in the back of the room go, oh, it's like, <laughs> it's perfect. The thing that's, that happened in Toronto is happening here in the Ottawa community, and I'm so happy that it's happening, and it is this, that people are, that they're aware of the concept of the show, they know they're going to get roasted, and they want to come on. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew I was onto something. There are some com there's comics like the, the, everyone is different and everyone has their own sensitivity levels and I'm I, and I will I will ask I say hey I would love to have you on my show and they're like I don't know if I can take that style of criticism and it's like that's totally fine that's totally fine I said would you like to be a writer I don't like dishing out that type of criticism it's like that's also totally fine so it it really is and, and that those people are few and far between I respect their decision and and, and however you know however they want to do the. But the, the, the comics are like, I heard about the show I want on. You know, let me on. And so, like, I would, in, in the Toronto scene, and I'm, I'm doing it here, I'll go out to open mics and watch comics and go, oh, they'll be ready by the time the next show comes along. You know, in Toronto, I'd see someone and go, they'll be ready in three months. So I was like, hey, we, I'm, I'm thinking sometime June, July, would you like to come on? Then it's like, absolutely, we'll do that. And in a lot of cases, I was able to, because it was at Comedy Bar, I was able to give a lot of comics their first paid show at Comedy Bar in Toronto and like, and they were like, thank you so much for that. And it was, it, it was great for me. And I just like, and one of the things I also try to do is make the show as inclusive as, as possible. Like, um, and that's, it's hard, it's not impossible, but it's more difficult in Ottawa because the community, it's a, because as a smaller community, there's, harder to find it's it's harder it's not it's not impossible it's just more uh, slightly more difficult than toronto is to find members of different communities to be able to, to come in and do stand up at a, at, at a, yeah at, at well, it's level. also like not every community is inclined to have comics as part of like a, i'll give you an example like in my culture it's always about you know becoming a doctor or a dentist correct or correct. you know mm -hmm. maybe the odd engineer mm -hmm. here and there right like you go to your parents and say i want, I want to become a comic what, what the hell are you talking about oh, you're yeah, a joker yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Uh huh. So that's it's big for a lot of communities. Yes. Uh, you know, just to like be able to abandon everything mm -hmm. that your parents believed in, right? Just so you can do your own thing. The the number of Arabic comics that I have uh, that, that I've had in, in Toronto and, and the Egyptian comics as, as well, they all talk about that experience mm -hmm. of like and it's it's rife in the community. Yeah. Right? And but it's it's how you address it. And it's how you it's, it's how you deal with it, and that becomes part of your voice. It becomes part of part of your. Uh, your delivery system, and I think I think that's great. One of the one of the best moments I ever had, and I, I felt so sorry for the guy, but it worked out so well. It was before a show in Toronto, and I'm in that mode of like, where are my comics? Where are my writers? Where are my audience? Like, a, like I've got zero out of three right now. Where is everyone? Like, is, like that sort of thing. And eventually, the comics start trickling in. I get a couple of writers, I'm like, okay, fine. And then some people start to, to to come and go. Is the show on? Go, yes, okay, fine. So like, we've got enough people. We have a show, and I go into I do one last check of the of the the showroom, and one of the comics is there, 
Kinnis, I think was 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 his name, uh, Irish guy. And he's uh, it's like the stereotypical writer's block thing, where he's he's in front of a blank piece of paper, his pen is above it, and he's frozen. And I'm like, uh oh, we might have a problem here. So I come over and I go, uh, what's what's wrong? He goes, I don't know what jokes to do tonight. And I, always being helpful, I said, I would pick the funny ones, you know, hoping that would help. He goes, uh, well, no, I want, I want to do my gay material. And I went, great, do your gay material, do it. He goes, well, what about your audience? I go, they're not my audience if they can't handle gay material. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what we're building here because every single show – I would try to make sure, like I, when I was developing the roster for the show, and like I, I would, I would go through and go, right, who have we got? And I look at it and go, it's too white and male. So I need more female. I need more BIPOC people. And then I look at it again, too straight. And I need, you know, some representation of, of, of the the, uh, the LGBTQ community. So I would, I would do that. It's like if you're not willing to listen to other voices, then I don't want you to be an audience member of the show. Mm -hmm. It's, it's because I want to see the diversity in the community. I want to see the diversity in the jokes. I want to see the diversity of the roasts to be able to, to, to talk about that. And, and it's always great. It's always wonderful because the reason I like that, to, to build a show like that, is to be able to learn myself about those communities because you learn so much when you see comics perform yeah. about their communities. I taught at Second City for quite a while, and then when we moved online, they did it, and I, they had a stand-up program. They said they approached me and said, would you like to teach? And one of the things I loved is watching the makeup of, of the room because more and more females were coming into the, into the program because the club system and the, the open mic system can be somewhat daunting. You know, and a lot of people are just looking for a, in most cases, where do I start? Like, how do I start comedy? How do I do this? So Second City sort of provided that. And, they, and they, uh, my friend Pierre Bro runs a similar course here in Ottawa where you can sign up and you, you'll learn how to do stand-up and you do a show in front of your friends and family. It's very contained and supportive and it's, it's, it's great. But seeing more people from BIPOC communities, from, from, from you know, different genders, from, from the LGBTQ community, it helped me grow in my understanding of where their material is coming from and then I got to put myself into their shoes and write those jokes for them. So if I had someone that was from the Arabic community and they're trying to, to do it, it helped me learn about the Arabic community because I'm hearing the jokes and the premises they're coming up with. And then I'm like, oh, okay, so this is how we can find that funny. Does this work? And then we would work on a, on a way to, to kind of bridge that gap between, you know, sort of like my impressions of the culture versus what yeah. the reality is. And then they help, you know, correct my course. And oh, for sure. It's definitely uh, comedy has grown over the years. Like I, I find, like I said, I've been going to comedy clubs mm -hmm. since like two thousand, two thousand and one. Yeah, I kind of started going to comedy clubs, and it's just, it's always like you, you notice now it's packed. Before yeah. it used to be like, okay, you'll go on a you know Saturday night or mm -hmm. like a Tuesday night or whatever, it'll be half the audience that that are today, and like they're actually having to book. Like you got to book yeah. in advance to show up and, mm -hmm. and do all of that, which is fantastic to see. And then the city is growing. Here in the city, we've got the two Yuck Yucks mm -hmm. and Absolute. Yep. For anyone that's watching, Yuck Yucks is on Elgin Street. Fantastic place there. Oh, they moved. <clears throat> where to? Yuck Yucks is now on, oh, it's where Biagio's is. Okay. Um, we'll look it up. We'll look it up. I, the, the and street. then Absolute has yes. been on Preston Absolute for Preston has been there 20 forever. Years. Yes. 20 plus they're years. About yeah. to, they're about to celebrate their 20th anniversary, I think. So. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to both. Fantastic places to go to. And then the cool thing about Absolute is you can always, you know, if you decided to go to the 8 o'clock, you can always go out mm -hmm. after, do your yeah, exactly. thing, you know, go to Heart and Crown down the mm -hmm. street. Lovely spot, or, right. or even the Moon Room just mm -hmm. down the street. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. As as I used to say, we used to do our our monthly in Toronto was at seven p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, and I would open every show. It's like you know, thank you for coming. It's like look at it this way: if everything goes wrong, you still have your night. Exactly. You know. Exactly. It's like if if it's you leave here at eight fifteen, going, oh that sucked. It's like, well, go get a drink. You know, yeah, that's for like, sure. Yeah. It's a perfect date night. Like if you're going to Absolute, you go Correct. down for the eight o'clock show. It doesn't mm -hmm. work out. You get out. You can laugh about exactly. the audience. Laugh, exactly. laugh about what what happened. Yes, uh, and connect with the mm -hmm. with the date that you have and what have you. Moon Room is a is a great spot. It's actually mm -hmm. one of our uh, uh, really cool spots here in the city. Oh, nice. 
Really appreciate the thought. Lots to bring to the table, lots for the audience to watch. And uh, comedy in Ottawa is growing so fast. It's been growing for the last 20 years yeah. or so. Again, thank you for being one of the funniest people on the show. Oh, come on. And uh, for folks that are watching, if you like what you see, uh, to continue getting th those episodes, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon as well, too. So many different episodes are coming, so many different uh, people, business people here in the city that uh, we can bring. And if you have anybody that you're thinking of, don't forget to comment. It's a fantastic way for us to, you know, go out and figure out who's else in the city that we can bring, the shakers and the movers and the funny people as well. Thanks again.